morning. Good morning, TBC kids. So for, for those who haven't been here, this is kind of neat for us. Let me introduce myself to you. I am Jason Marlowe. I have the wonderful privilege of being pastor here at Tucka Siege. And this was a new for us this year. We kind of changed things up, and we had vacation Bible school over the weekend. And it kind of led to this, that you get to see what it looks like. So a lot of our church folks, you know, don't necessarily come during the week. And you get to see what vacation Bible school looks like and looks like all the time. You hear about it. But you got to experience it for real. And listen, it takes a lot of people to make Vacation Bible School work. We had over 60 volunteers every single night work. As a matter of fact, going everything from those who came in beforehand, running food, putting up decorations, security, everything and anything you can think of. So if you helped out with VBS this week as an adult, a student helping out, will you stand up right now for us so we can recognize you? Up in the balcony, we see you hiding away. And there's so many more you saw, thank you guys, that were downstairs. And so for VBS this year, believe it or not, if you're here at Tucka Siege, uh, we have been walking through uh, Peter, First Peter. We call it the Gospel of Hope. And sure enough, wouldn't you know who won the pony and how God works? The verse this year for Vacation Bible School was First Peter chapter 5 verse 7 we didn't plan it that way we're not that smart but guess who is god is right all right so let's stand up guys we're gonna throw the bible verse up here and we're gonna read this together ready tbc kids adults we stand up for god's word you ready it says i want to count of three because we're used to counting one two three here we go give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Heavenly Father, God, we love you. And more importantly than that, I pray that we are overwhelmed and remember that you love us. Be with us this morning. Thank you for all the hard work that went into this week and this weekend. And may we be faithful stewards of everything that you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So you may not realize this, kids, but when you're going through this, and adults as well, memorizing this Bible verse, we talk about it all the time. The Bible tells us that we have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. This is one of those Bible verses that is probably one of my most favorite and probably one of the most important Bible verses that you could ever remember and write down. Because it tells us two important lessons that we need to know in life. The first lesson is that there is a God. Right off the bat, Peter's saying, hey, God cares about you. So we know there is a God. The Bible is very clear that there is one God, the all-powerful creator and the ultimate authority of the universe. Psalm 115 said, our God is in the heavens and he does as he wishes. Jeremiah said, Oh, sovereign Lord, sovereign means that you are all authority. You are in control. He says, you made the heavens and you made the earth. How? By your strong hand, your powerful arm. Nothing, nothing is too hard for God. And so first and foremost, we understand that there is a God. These verses remind us that God is incredibly powerful. He has authority and control over everything. God is the creator of everything and the ultimate authority of everything. And nothing happens that doesn't happen because of him. Nature and all creation. And here's the thing too. It's not just in the Bible that we look and we see it. God has revealed himself in the Bible, which is his word. But he's also revealed himself in his works, which is all of creation. Right? So we, we can look in the Bible and we read the words and we see about God and how powerful he is and how much he loves us and all those things too. But we also look at creation. How many of you have ever walked out at night and you look up at the stars? One of my fa- favorite things when I was growing up, I always thought I wanted to be an astronaut. It didn't work out. Here I am, right? But I want to be an astronaut. And one of my favorite things, I was always looked and I watched astronomy and stuff. And this was probably one of my favorite pictures, the picture of the, the Milky Way galaxy. And when you look at how enormous that is, trillions and trillions and trillions of stars. And so the Bible tells us, hey, we can, we look at creation and we look at all of that and we look at the moon and the sun and the stars and everything. We just stare out in the morning and in the night and we see all those things and like, 
there's a God. He created these things. So, so God reveals himself in, in his word. He tells us all the things about him, his, his personality and his, and, and, his, and his character. We see these things and his greatness and his glory is all right there for us to see. Every single night we wake up. I don't know, have you ever been to the beach, guys, and, and your mom's like, all right, come on, family. We got to go get a picture at sunrise or sunset, right? We all go out there and it's like early in the morning. You're like, oh, I got to go get my picture taken. And I watched, we, had, we went to the beach one time, and we had a, a place that was right there looking down, and, it, and I always like to get up early, and I'm drinking my coffee, and you'd watch all these people come out to the beach to have pictures taken for sunrise. I mean, it was packed out. Most of them in their pajamas still, their hair's all jacked up, right? They just out there with their coffee. But you got to see the sunrise, right? And then as soon as that sun went, whoop, and that's the sound it makes. If you don't get up that early, you would know the sound the sun makes. <laughs> so as soon as it went, whoop, Remember, again, that's the sound it makes. Everybody went cha-ching and got the selfie, bam, bam, posted it, and then they walked right back and they were gone. And then here's the funny thing happened. About 12 hours later, that same crew came out because it was setting, and they take pictures. But here's the thing, and I always thought about this, like, listen, the sun is awesome coming up and going down. Anytime you can look up and you see all the stuff that God has made, and it's like, man, I see his, his fingerprints and his handiwork, and it just points to there has to be, there is this all-powerful God. Now, now, for us today, we're going to make it even more practical. Right? Sam talked about it a little bit, and listen, there is nobody more excited than me about what's going to happen after church today. We have a petting zoo downstairs, and in this petting zoo is a baby camel. That may or may not be said baby camel. That is a baby camel. You look right there, buddy. Don't you, don't you not. I will tell you right now, without a shadow of a doubt, because I have seen this baby camel with my own two little peepers. I went, and he, and he, and he saw me, and he went, because he knew it was me. And he knew I'd been looking for him, and he's, he's licking. That's going to be on video somewhere, and Brad Huffstead was going to make that into a meme. And I'm not doing that one again. <laughs> but so, so I met the baby camel. Him and I are already on first name basis, y'all. His name is Jeffrey. Yeah, that's good, John. I will introduce you. We're friends. There's also a porcupine. I've not figured out why there's a porcupine at a petting zoo. That seems like a hazard to me. <laughs> you signed waivers. You signed waivers. No, but, but here's the thing. We see these animals and, and our dogs and our pets and our cats and our fish and whatever other critters, geckos that you go around kissing. Thanks for that video. But we see it and it reminds us that there is a God who created these things, these animals, this creation. And so we see God, we, we hear about God in his word and we see God in all of his creation. It reminds us that there is this powerful God who's in charge of everything. In, in other words, guys, we can relax because God's got this. But bigger than that, I think it's, it's important that we understand that there is a God. And I think we look at the stars and we look at the baby camels and we're all like, yeah, there's a God because that thing just didn't in here, right? They had a creator. There had to be something that happened that brought us this. And we get that. But more importantly than understanding and believing that there is a God, is believing that God cares about you. You see, it's one thing to know that there's this all-powerful creator of the universe, sustainer of the universe. It's one thing to know that there's this great big God who creates all this stuff, who, who created us, who did all these things. And it's one thing to know all those things. It's something totally different and life-changing to know that God cares about us. And just as clear as the Bible is about who God is, the Bible is just as clear that God cares about us. If, you're, if you'd like to take notes or write down, this is one of those Bible verses that you, that you write down. Jesus was talking to people, and they were worried about everything. He's like, look, why do you worry about these things? And he says, look at the birds. Right? We see the birds out here. They don't plant and they don't harvest. They're not making gardens and not going to the grocery store. But guess what? God makes sure the birds and the animals and all the little critters in the woods are taken care of. It's not Snow White, it's God. But Jesus says, hey, you're so much more valuable to him than that. 
The Bible says that we are God's masterpiece. Just like he, he made the camel, but he created us. But we, we're his masterpiece. We are the thing that he wants the most. We are, we are we're not, the thing that he loves. When, when he created, he said that it is very good. He's created us as new people in Jesus. Why? So we can do all the things that he has planned for us. God has a plan for you. He created you, we always say here at Tucker Siege, on purpose and for a purpose. And for some of you today, the purpose was to get you here so you could hear and know, maybe for the first time, that God exists and that God loves you. You see, God loves each and every one of us, and he cares deeply for each and every one of us. And here's the thing, it's easy for me to say, I care about you, but talk is cheap. God didn't just say that he cares about us and that he loves us. He showed us. Probably the most famous Bible verse in all the Bible is John 3, 16. It says, for this is how God loved the world. See, love without anybody doing anything is just a lie. If you say, well, I care about you, but I, but I ignore you, that's not real. If I say I love you, but I don't show that, that's not love. But the Bible says God so loved us. He showed his love that he gave his one and only son. Why? So that everyone who believed in him could have eternal life. Now, here's the thing, and this is where I think it is, because I can tell you that God cares about you the same way I tell you your, your mom, your dad, your, your, your aunt, your uncle, your guardian, all these people that are in your life, these adults that love you, all these, these, these adults that are here at Tucker Seeds that were working with you, I can tell you that they love you all the time, but sometimes you, you don't get what you want, so you think that God doesn't like you or love you or care about you because he doesn't give you everything you ask for. The truth of the matter is, is God doesn't always give us what we want, because he knows what we need. And what do I mean by this? And, and your parents are going to lean into this one because they're going to like this part. When your moms and dads have you do stuff and you're like, I don't want to do that. You need to understand when moms and dads say to do stuff, we say to do those things because we care about you. Because we love you. Because we don't want you to get hurt. And sometimes there's stuff that we want to do. We're like, I just want to go play in the, I'm going to play in the traffic. It looks like fun. All right? And mom and dad's like, that's probably not a good idea. Today you're going to be like, hey, I think I want to pet that camel. Probably not a good idea. And so when the people out there are like, hey, let's step five feet back from the camel. Why? Because did you know this? I learned this in Disney. Spits. That's exactly right. Watch out for camels. They spit. The genie told me this in Aladdin. Right? So you got to watch out. So we say these things. So listen, let me do it this way, right? Let me do this way. How many of you know who this kid is? Do y'all know who that is? Fourth grade, who's that? That's Cade. That's my son. Now, look, what's he have on his head? He's got a helmet on his head. Now, look, now look, there are times in Cade's life when he was little where he probably should have had a helmet on all the time. Because he ran around and did stuff. But do, you, do I make Cade, does, it, does Cade's mom and I, do we make Cade wear that helmet because we don't want him to look cool? No. Listen, I'll tell you this, it is, Cade pulls it off, he does a good job of it, but it's very hard to look cool wearing a helmet. But do you know why we have Cade wear a helmet? Because Cade does this. Here's the thing, what happens when Cade falls? Right! So we have him wear a helmet. We do those things. Listen, we do those things because we love him. Adults, you have prayers. You pray to God. And some of you are here today and you're mad at God because God didn't do what you wanted when you wanted. You became disappointed in him because he didn't show up in the way that you thought that he should. You see, disappointment comes when expectations and experiences don't line up. And we harbor that in our heart and we get angry and angry because you didn't do what I wanted to do. And what you're missing is just like Cade. He, maybe he got mad at first and he didn't want to wear a helmet because he's the only one wearing a helmet. And I don't want to wear this stupid helmet. And it's hot and it hurts and I don't like it. And I always have to have it on. But he understood the first time he fell and he hit his head and it popped on the helmet instead of his brain. He went, oh, that makes sense. 
you might not understand exactly why God didn't do it, but you need to understand that God doesn't always do and show up the way that we want because he does and shows up exactly the way we need. Why? Because he is all-powerful and all-knowing, and he knows what we need better than we do. And sometimes in our life, it looks like discipline, and and that that kind of lines us up. The the Bible says God disciplines those he loves, and he punishes each one he accepts as a child. Guys, when your moms and dads are like, hey, you didn't listen, so now you're in trouble, we do that because we want you to know that there are rules, and these rules are there because they hurt you, because you can get hurt, and we want to make sure that when you do this and you listen, you understand how important it is. Not because we don't love you, but 100% because we do. Adults, it's the same way with God. God has laid out his commandments for us, and and we get so caught up in in do's and do nots, and the Bible says, all this stuff, I can't have any fun, and I can't do any of this stuff. I want you to listen to the commands of God in a new way today. That instead of hearing God say, don't do that, I don't want you to have fun. I want you to hear the words of an all-powerful, loving God saying, hey, Don't do that because I love you and I don't want you to get hurt. I love you and I know where this can lead. I love you and I know what can happen from this. I've set these things up. I have set these rules up, these commandments, this fence, because I know what's on the other side of that. God's commandments are, are like a pasture. These, these animals that we're going to hang out with today, they, they live out in um, Iron Station, which is not that far from my house, which means I'm going to go visit a baby camel this week. They told me I could. So <laughs> that's probably what he'll do. He'll <laughs> and spit on me. That's how it's going to happen. But they have a pasture that they're in. Here's the thing. The fence around that pasture isn't just to keep the animals out. It's to keep the coyotes and other animals from getting in. God has set up these commandments and these laws for us, these these, these do's and do nots, because he loves us. Don't equate God's no to to him not loving you. When you hear God say no, understand that's because he's saying either not yet or no, because I know better. So there's something we talk about here at Tucker Siege every time when we kind of wind up. There's, there, I'm going to teach everybody here today. We're going to learn a little bit of, of Latin. How many of you ever know what Latin is? You know what Latin is? Latin's a dead language. What that means is, is it's worthless. I took Latin for two years in high school. It was worthless for 20 years of my life before I became a pastor. Who knew? God knew. There's this phrase that the early church would say. It was kind of a a prayer, but it was a way of we lived. And it's it's this phrase, quorum Deo. Everybody say quorum Deo. Quorum Deo. Oh, we're going to do it VBS style. Y'all say quorum. Quorum? Y'all say Deo. Adults, come on. Somewhere, some liturgical church is rolling over from their graves that we're hollering this out like this. Quorum literally means in the presence of. Quorum comes from the, 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 the Latin word that means to the pupil of the eye. And it means in the presence of. Deo, which is you guys say that, that's God. So literally this means in the presence of God. What's that mean? It means when we live our lives, we are to be, Mr. Shannon taught us what? Salt and light, right? Salt and light. That is, how do we live this out? Well, first and foremost, how do we live this out in our life? Understand this, belief matters. What you believe matters. What you believe about God, what you believe about the character of God, and what you believe that God says about you is the most important thing. If understand, if God is the most important person in the universe, if Jesus is the most important person, person, important person in the easy for you to say (laughs) if jesus is the most important person in the universe then what you think about him is the most important thing for you belief matters and here's the thing it's not enough to believe in god to believe that there is a god i would say that you go and ask you know 80 percent of the people today there's there's something Why? Because I look at the Milky Way, and I I look at the camel, and I see these things, and I see, as the old story would be, the watch, so I know there must be a watchmaker. 
I recognize that there is a God, but, but where we miss it is, is that we miss the fact that that God cares about us. So it's one thing to believe in God, it's another thing to believe God. That belief is the faith that leads to righteousness. To not just believe there is a God, and that he exists in all the ways that the Bible says he is, but to understand that he loves us. And what happens is the way we understand that belief matters because what you believe is how you act. Belief is revealed in our actions. I, I could say all day, but man, you know, I could tell you guys like, man, that there, that is a grade A, 100% solid wood stool. I trust this thing with all my 200 plus pounds. I have no doubt about this thing sitting. I, 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 would, I would sit on this anywhere, anytime, anyhow. I have no doubt about this stool. I, I believe in this stool. It exists in space time. It takes up space. It has mass. It is matter. But I don't trust, really trust this stool until I sit on it. I'm really worried if I can sit on this. I've sat on this thing a thousand times, and maybe today's the day that I go to sit on it and it breaks. I believe in the stool. Now I believe the stool. Right? No, there it is. It's the difference. It's, it's, we, we all trust it when it's somebody else. There's this, this great story. There was this, this guy. How many of you know what a high, a high wire act is, like the circus, where they have the, the rope that goes all the way across? There was this dude, and this was way back when. There was this family that would travel around, and this is the old Braves Stadium, Fulton County Stadium. And they would travel around, and, and they had a, a rope, a wire that went from one end of Fulton County Stadium to the other. And this guy gets up there, and the whole family, and they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff on this high wire. I mean, they got, like, you know, jumping up and down. They're doing flips. They're doing all kinds of stuff. And there's a, a hype man. He's down here talking to the people. And he goes, "Woo! how many of you think that he can take this wheelbarrow across this, this line? And everybody's like, "Woo! we believe. And he goes, do you really believe that he can push this wheelbarrow all the way across this wire from one end to the other? And they're like, we believe, we believe. Do you really believe today that he can push this wheelbarrow from one side to the other? We believe. And then he said, all right, who's ready to come sit in the wheelbarrow? Belief is revealed in our actions. What we say we believe is revealed in how we live. Not only is belief revealed in our actions, guys, and we, we, we preach this at Tucker Siege, our love is revealed in our actions. Love is revealed in our actions. Jesus said that if we loved him, we would do what he says. He says, he says I, I love you, and if you love me, you will listen to me. It, 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 guys, it, it's why your parents get so upset when you don't listen, because it's like you don't trust me. And I always told our kids, you know, we're trying to get them to eat something new, and they, and they spit it back out at you, right, parents? And, and we don't get mad just because you're being disrespectful, but that's part of it, right? It's because you think I would give you something that's not good. You don't trust me. When you trust me and you know that I love you, then you listen. And Jesus said, if you love me and you know that I love you, then you'll do what I say. And he's given us two things. The first was the great commandment. The great commandment. He says, this is it. This is it. This is the law. What do you have to do? This is the fence around your life. It is this. It is to love. You've got to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. And he said, the, the, the second part is just like the first this one, this is the first and greatest commandment, yes. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. This love in action, loving God with all of our heart, loving others. And then out of that, we are given this great commission. As believers, we are salt and light. We live our lives. We live our belief. Coron Deo, in the presence of God. And Jesus told his disciples, he said, all right, I've given you all this now, therefore go. Make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit teach all these new disciples to obey the commands. What was the command? Love God, love your neighbor. Be sure of this. This is the best part. Jesus said, I'm with you even to the end of age. See, that's the big thing. Throughout the scriptures, two things are evident. The existence and person of God and his love for us. And these two things for all of us came together in Christ. As we sit here today, especially as adults, we, we, we carry so much more weight. We carry the weight of, of our children, the weight of work, and all these different things. The preceding verses, the, the bookend verses of this main verse of 1 Peter 5, 7 that says, Hey, cast your cares on God because he cares about you. The first one says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. And then the next one says, be aware you've got an enemy, right, that wants to destroy you. These two things remind us that God loves us and is watching after us. He cares about us. He wants us to give our cares to them. He wants us to handle this. And, over. and adults, that's humbling to ask for help, to say that I can't do it. Can I, can I tell you, just speaking adult to adult, the most freeing thing that you could have today is to understand that there is a God and it's not you. Because you don't have to carry all these things. You weren't created all these things. You were created to love him. That's your job. Now that loving him and glorifying him manifests itself in our jobs, in our parenting, in everything that we are and everything we do. Yes. But he takes care of all of that. We are called to love him. To love God with all of our hearts. To love him completely. To love ourselves correctly. To humble ourselves. And then when we do that, we love other people compassionately. Upward, inward, outward. The flow of God's love for us. Let's stand. If you would bow your heads with me. The Bible teaches us not only the love of God and the greatness of God, it teaches us of our own need. You see, we mess up every single day. God has set out his commandments for us to love him with our whole heart and to love others as ourselves. And the truth of the matter is, is we can't do that perfectly. But because we couldn't do it perfectly, Jesus came and did it for us. And we trust in what he did. When we trust in his work, there is forgiveness and there is freedom. No matter how bad we think we've messed up, we can't outrun and we can't out sin God's grace. And so we come before him. Father, we come before you now. Father, we confess our sins and our shortcomings. We have not always loved you with our whole heart. And we have not always loved others as ourselves. We have failed you, Father, in the things we have done and the things that we have left undone. And we ask forgiveness in the precious name of Jesus. Not in anything that we could do but in his work on the cross. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen.